From a tomb that was sealed, isolated, restricted, came the promise fulfilled. That very moment the whole world held its breath. After three days, a great pause. Awaiting the moment death met its victor, the resurrection of life at the break of dawn. On the third day, a new day, the stone had been rolled away. A new life brought forward in a flash of bright light and an angel's cry. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God is good. He has remembered the broken, the downtrodden, the forgotten, the grieving, and has given them everything. For God so loved the world this world, our world, that he fought the fight for all creation and won with an act of ferocious love in the sacrifice of his most precious son, Jesus of Nazareth, the carpenter crucified on the tree, the body bandaged in the grave. He is now Jesus Christ, the victorious victor, the Savior sent the Holy of Holies. He is not here. He has risen. He is risen.
Good morning. Sorry, I was just getting someone away safe there. Can't get that off my earring. It is so good to see you. Hey everyone, you can you can say hello and good morning. If you are watching online, it is so good to have you with us as well. But if you are here in the venue, why don't you turn to the person beside you and say, it's so good to see you. It is really, really lovely. If you are at home, I wish you could be here. Wish we could all be here in the venue together, but you are just as much of our treasured guest as everyone here in the venue is as well. And it's so nice to worship together as a family, to be in God's presence. And although it is so good to be here, this building is not our destination. It is not the only reason why we gather. We gather because of God's presence and we get to feel that and be a part of that everywhere that we are. So. Please feel at home with us, feel very welcome here with us. And if you feel kind of nervous, everyone does too. I couldn't sleep last night. I was very, very excited to have everyone back here in our building um, as we join together as family. But happy Easter, he has risen. Guys, you need to be, you need to like lean yourself back into being here in the venue. You, know, you have to respond to me a wee bit. He's risen. Yeah, <laughs> and if you are at home, feel free to cheer as well. That might feel a wee bit weirder if you're sitting in your living room with your family, but it's only weird if you make it weird, isn't it? <laughs> 
But yeah, this is the part of our gathering where I let you know a couple of things that are happening here in our community. But I'm not gonna be here for long. I'm really just here to say hello, good morning, and happy Easter. And I wanna let you know that our services aren't only just for Easter. They are forever, just like dogs aren't just for Christmas, dogs are forever, but services aren't just for Easter, they are carrying on as we go throughout the year. So our services will be at half nine for a family service and they will be at half past 11 for a regular gathering. The tickets for those, isn't it mad that we live in a time where you have to ticket church? And that is not the way that we hope to do it, but we do have to limit it for everyone's safety. Those tickets will go live on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. So if you're ever worried about getting a ticket, that is the time to put a reminder in your phone. But it was great, as I said, to be able to welcome you all in here this morning. And we hope that you not only feel at home, but you feel really welcome um, here in this family, whether you are in this building or whether you're at home. Our prime desire today is that we would just sit in God's presence as a community of people wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, and whenever you decide to watch this gathering with us. Easter is the most beautiful time in the church as we journey the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus, of what he has done for us and what we get to celebrate today is just incredible. And each of us have a story of how we relate to that, of how we come in to the joy of Jesus, that moment whenever you first had that encounter with the Holy Spirit, that moment where you said yes to Jesus. And if you are watching or you're here in the room and you haven't yet done that, we want you to know that we are praying for you and we are here for you, that if you experience Jesus in any way at any time, then we would love to be able to chat with you. But as I said, we all have a story of how we relate to that and how we come in to that story as well. And a couple of weeks ago, I got to spend some time with a couple of people in our community who are gonna share their story of how they came to know Jesus, the impact that he has had on their life. So please do, this day is a reminder for you to think about that, to think about what Jesus did in your life, to go back to that moment where you first fell in love with the one and only, our Christ and our Savior and our friend. And both Michelle and Andy are gonna share a wee bit of their story now. It's gonna come up on your screens at home and the screen in here. So please do sit back and take it in and enjoy their story as they share it with us. Hi, I'm Michelle and this is my story. My name's Andy and this is my story. Two years ago, this today, it was the first time I ever came and leading up to that I was in a pretty low place like some students watching this might know like the homesickness, the, the loneliness you feel. I came home and I was really homesick and I, I was going through a lot um, and I met up with a friend who comes here and um, we, went, we went out for a wee ice cream um, and uh, he invited me along. I, I live around the corner. Like I, I knew he came here. Didn't really know much of this church. Once I graduated from university, um, I was very heavily influenced by The Apprentice and thought I was going to be the next uh, Alan Sugar's apprentice. And thought I'm going to move to London and I'm going to become this big businesswoman and be very, very successful and make lots and lots of money. Um, so I decided to move to London. So I was there right at the beginning of, um, you know, the tech scene and how uh, technology has really impacted and shaped the world. So it was a really exciting place to be and I thought, yes, this is it, I've made it. Um, but I wasn't happy and there was something missing and I couldn't understand. I'd worked so hard to get my degree, I'd worked so hard to get this job, um, but something was missing and I just couldn't quite put my finger on it. So I, I, can't, I, I, I just went, you know what, screw it, I'll, I'll come along. Um, and so I did, and it was so good. I actually stayed for both services. I didn't realise they would be the same thing, <laughs> but they were. Both as good as each other. I went to the Young Adults Tribe at James and Hannah Toll's house. And it was just really a really lovely experience. Um, uh, at the end of it, we they they all prayed for me, um, which is something that has never happened. Um, having seven people you barely know standing incredibly close to you, praying over you, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen today, you know. Um, uh, back, in back, in, <laughs> back in the good old days, you could lay a hand on a shoulder and not get a £200 fine for it. Um, yeah, uh, and I had that real, like, you know, if, if anyone's been lucky enough to encounter the Holy Spirit, you, 
you kind of know the feeling, your chest gets heavy, your knees get a bit weak, kind of like the Eminem song. And like, I just knew there was something different going on. Just from then on, I'm like this, Jesus is real, Jesus loves me, Jesus is in my life. I wanted to be acceptance, I wanted validation, I wanted to be part of something and um, you know, ended up making friends or what I thought was friends with people who maybe um, didn't necessarily have my best interests at heart and uh, until a girl um, I worked with started inviting me to church and every week without fail she would say Michelle, do you want to come to church this week? Michelle, do you want to come to church this week? Michelle, do you want to come to church this week? And every time I would cringe because in my head a Christian and church was something completely different to what I've learned the reality to be. Um, so one day I gave in to this girl because she just was so persistent and I thought, oh, just to get her off my back, I'm going to go. And um, I started going to Hillsong um, and I started going along to a small group and they would talk about Jesus and the Bible and they would pray and and I just I just was so taken aback and started to realize actually Jesus is a real person um, you know what these people are talking about is something that is real and I went to, to church that, that Sunday after and I just couldn't deny it anymore so like I said previously, I really struggled with loneliness and feeling isolated, you know, felt like I could go out with a whole group of friends and just have the feeling like I didn't need to be there. These guys can all get on and that's fine. Um, but ever since coming here, like I have developed such a great community around me, people that love me. Like Jesus has blessed my life with friends. Um, I can go to any one of my friends with absolutely anything. and they'll be there for me. And I just remember there was what's called an altar call. So somebody had, you know, said at the front, if you want to give your life to Jesus, you know, everyone close your eyes. And if you want to raise your hand. I had heard that lots of times, you know, growing up in Northern Ireland and didn't really think anything of it. But in that moment, after seeing other people's lives who were Christians and listening to what they had to say and being present when they've been praying and sharing the Bible. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't deny it any longer and I had to put my hand up and yes it was cringy and yes it was awkward but I, the sense of, of freedom and release and like this burden just being completely lifted off me um, just came upon me when, in that moment and, and that was the moment. Um, I decided, yeah, you know, I, I want to be a Christian, you know, yeah, please forgive me for not knowing you, Jesus, and, you know, come into my life, and, and that was it, and that was a long time ago now, so, yeah. One thing this church does so well is community, and, you know, you're never short of a smile from Laura, or a cup of tea from Laura, or a biscuit from Laura. Um, <laughs> or any other of the staff members or anyone else in the church. Um, and, you know, that's just one thing that really, you know, is so great. And, you know, systematically that's just ripped away from lockdown and church having to be online. And, you know, people, some people will experience it. You know, the fact that it's on a screen, some people can't engage. But even, you know, the Lord has blessed the world with iPhone. And what's up? You know, just, that, you know, if you're watching this here, you know, that one person that you're thinking of, or even if you feel like you are that person, just, you know, text one of your mates, like, they'd love to hear from you, because no doubt they're feeling somewhat similar. What has changed your Um, yeah, like, he, he's added, like, purpose and understanding, front and foremost, and, and love, you know, as I've said before, like, I wanted to live. I wanted to live life in a certain way. I didn't realize that that was living life like Jesus. People that haven't met Jesus, you know, notice that there's something different going on, and that that is Jesus. Like there's less of me and there's more of Him. You know, I am a servant to the kingdom, and I just want to do the kingdom's work. It sometimes can be very difficult to find Jesus on a building site in the middle of Down Patrick, but. I do what I can to make sure that's known and that, you know, that really gives me a good sense of purpose in that. 
I was chasing something that didn't exist. I was chasing after money and success and, um, you know, belonging and having this big career and this, you know, really exciting time of being in a tech scene. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, it was empty. Um, there was nothing there when I got there. Um, and I think the difference sort of Jesus has made in my life is that I have got a purpose. Um, my life means something. Um, and I suppose, you know, one of the verses that I carry a lot, um, which won't be a surprise to some people who, who know this verse or, or know their Bible and have heard me speak, uh, would be Jeremiah 29 verse 11. And it's where it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Um, you know, and plans to give you a purpose. And knowing that, you know, I am made for a reason. My life has got a purpose. I exist on the earth um, to, you know, help bring the kingdom of God here and into other people's lives. Um, it just changes your outlook on everything. Doesn't mean that nothing's ever gonna go wrong in your life or that you're never gonna have troubles or difficulties or challenges. Um, but when you know your identity in Christ and you know that you've got a purpose and you know why you've got that purpose, um, it just means that you still carry on regardless of what happens to you in your life through the good times and, and the bad um, because you're here for a reason. It's incredible to hear just what God is doing in their lives and in yours. And he has been at work in our lives all over the last year. And I'm aware that we have missed some of the stories, some of the moments where Jesus has came and has spoken to you, has guided you through this year. And we just are so thankful. We are so grateful for what God has done in our life. If you're here this morning and or you're watching at home or at another time, and you're yet to give your life to Jesus and you would really like to do that or you would like to start the conversation, we would love to pray for you. We would love to have that conversation. No question is a stupid question and no conversation is ever wasted. It would be our absolute joy and privilege to be able to pray with you and for you. If you are already a Christian and maybe this year has been really hard, you've just felt distant, it's been hard to show up with Jesus, do not let guilt and shame just rid you of having that conversation. Don't let that moment pass you by because this is the greatest life to live with Jesus. The absolute joy and privilege of our lives to know him, to love him and to be known and loved by him changes everything. You can watch those stories back. There'll be a couple more over the next few days that we're gonna put up on social media. Allow them to encourage you. Allow them to be a part of your, just your day over the next couple of days. But please know that we are here for you as a community of people. This family is an open family and you are more than welcome to join us at any time. We're gonna respond now. If you are at home, you might want to change your posture in somewhere. We're gonna stand here in the venue if you would like to stand. Um, but if you are at home and you maybe want to experience something, sometimes a change in our posture can just help our mindset. Nothing magical happens when you do that, but it just allows you to enter into that place. You might wanna put your hand on your heart. You might wanna hold your hands out. You might wanna raise your hands, whatever way you would like to do that. I'm gonna pray for us. And then James and the team are going to lead us in some worship. Heavenly Father, we say that we are so grateful, that we are so thankful for what you did on the cross, for your life, your death, and your resurrection, that you came that we might know freedom and rescue and love in the greatest form. And Father, we just take a moment to lean into your presence. Father, we take a moment to just enjoy that. You might have gone quite a long time without just allowing the Holy, the Holy Spirit to come and to minister to you. It might feel strange, it might be the first time that you have done that. But as Andy explained, that it just changes something. You might feel a difference in the heat of your hands or the, something happening in your heart. And that is just Jesus speaking to you. Just allow that to happen. Don't push past that moment. Just be there with him. 
we just say, come Holy Spirit, come and minister, come and heal. And I just declare joy over every single person where joy might have been hard to find this year. I just speak joy over your life. That today is the most joyful day in our calendar. The day that Jesus rose again, that he did something miraculous and that he did it for you. That if you were the only person in this room, if it was just you, the only person, he would have came just for you. So Jesus, we welcome your presence. We say, come and have your way. That we love you, that we adore you, and it is an absolute joy to worship you. Come, Holy Spirit.
of you, Lord. We worship you. We love you, Lord. And we worship you. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Let's sing that one more time, Christ. In Christ, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me.
today, Lord, that you are risen, that you're not distant or dead, but that you rose victorious, and that you were true to your word, Lord. Lord, we celebrate what that means and what that makes available to us, that we can take hope, and we can receive the resurrected life that's available to us this morning, Lord. We celebrate who you are, Lord. We invite you to be with us the rest of this morning as we continue to celebrate. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Guys, we are um, we're going to continue to worship by uh, lifting an offering. Um, all the instructions to do so will appear on the screen. We're a community that loves to invest financially into what the Father's doing in this place at this time. Um, if you already uh, give financially into what the Father's doing in this, in this place um, through this community, uh, why not take a moment, if you're in the, in the room today, to turn around and say hello to someone. Um, but if you're at home this morning, uh, just take this opportunity to text someone uh, and let them know that you're thinking about them. And we're going to continue on in our Easter celebration in just a couple of moments when Andy's going to share a thought. Thanks, guys. Well, good afternoon. 
All right, I know you haven't been here for a year, but you know, we're back to this again. Good afternoon. It is just wonderful to welcome you into our venue. If you are watching at home uh, today or later in the week, we are thrilled that you've chosen to gather with us on this Easter Sunday. I feel like I should apologize for lockdown hair. I have a comb over that would rival Donald Trump at the minute. Um, I, I trust my wife with the back and sides but not with the top. Um, I don't know if that's wisdom or foolishness, but anyway, um, you are so welcome. If we haven't met before, my name's Andy. I'm the senior pastor here at Lagan Valley Vineyard. And just before we jump into the scriptures this morning, there's a couple of things that I just want to uh, talk about. Laura already mentioned tickets for church. Yes, tickets for Church, it's such a weird time that we uh, live in, and uh, 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights, I hope, are about to become very important for a lot of us. Um, But there's one little admin detail that's going to be really important for us as a team over the coming weeks, and that is if you're trying to get a ticket for church and it's full, it'll really help us if you could sign up for the reserve list. The numbers on the reserve list will help us see the demand for us to add services. And we're already thinking and talking about that as a staff team, but it's really helpful. It's one metric for us just to see what the demand is going to be like for more in-person services. So if you don't get a ticket, please just take a couple of minutes and add yourself to a reserve list and your family so that we can be helped uh, that way. Secondly, I want to echo Stu's thanks from last week to all of you who have so faithfully served us over the last year and who continue uh, to do so. I got really emotional uh, this morning getting out of my car as families were arriving to the building. I cannot tell you what it does to my heart in worship to hear the sound of little babies in this room. Uh, It's so, so, so important. But there's been so many people over the last year that have worked so tirelessly to make everything happen. It has not been ideal. It has not been what any of us would choose or design things to be like. Um, But I'm so grateful to all of you who have served us, and I'm so grateful for all of you who have borne or bared with us. An English teacher can uh, correct me on the right pronunciation there later, but um, I really appreciate how you have shown up in prayer meetings and in our community and for us over the last year, how you continue to do so. Finally, on uh, the theme of thank yous, um, I don't know about your family, but 7 p.m. for the last six weeks for us as a family has been a really sacred time as we have uh, shared our Lenten devotions together and finished our evening singing the doxology. Somebody commented when I was, I sent them a recording of my three kids singing the doxology in the evening. They said, Andy, it sounds like you have a monastery running up there. Um, I think you'll agree with me that um, our Lenten devotions over the last six weeks have been world class. And uh, Stu, thank you so much for all of what you've done there. And for all of you who have written uh, for those as well, uh, it's my intention, I haven't even talked to Stu about this, but it's my intention that we'll get that printed into some kind of booklet or book for next year. Um, I think they've been just spectacular and certainly serve me and my family well as we have connected with Jesus over the last little while. December 2019, remember then, the world was a completely different place. It was only medics and scientists among us who had heard the word coronavirus, maybe a few who were particularly switched on to the news in China at that time. There's something else that started in December 2019. That was our journey in the book of Matthew. It literally has been running for the last 16 months, the whole way from the beginning of rumors and whispers of coronavirus right up until this moment. Um, We have been studying this gospel of Matthew uh, together, and we have two Sundays left. We have this week and we have next week. The story Matthew has been telling us has been The story of Jesus, the story of the kingdom of God invading the world, moving towards 
humanity. At the very beginning of Jesus' ministry in Matthew 4, he declares, repent for the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God has come near to you. For the 24 chapters following that proclamation, Matthew has been retelling us how Jesus demonstrated and explained the coming of God's kingdom, the place where what God wants happens. We're going to pick up the story this morning in chapter 28, verse 1. Come, Holy Spirit. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow and the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let's pray. Father, this morning we join with all of creation in celebrating the resurrection of your son, Jesus. And we humbly in this moment present ourselves before you and invite you to come and speak deeply into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I wonder, have you ever noticed somebody doing something in a way that made absolutely no sense to you? That feels like a pretty good summary of the first three or four years of my marriage. <laughs> the way people do things tells us so much about them, doesn't it? And, and when it comes to God, he is no different the way God acts has as much to teach us about him as the acts themselves do. Far too often we can read the Bible in a little bit of a lazy kind of way. We focus often on the acts themselves and we miss the way in which they come about and the treasures and truths that are hidden therein. Far too often we don't dig into the ways. Why did he do it like that? Why did it happen in that way is such a powerful question when it comes to how we engage with the story of God and the scriptures. And one of the things you notice if you begin to read the scriptures in that way is God almost never acts in the way that we would expect him to, or the way we would, were we him, thank God. The very first Easter is no different. In fact, there, there's such an interesting parallel between the very first Christmas and the way in which that story unfolds and the very first Easter and the way in which that story unfolds. Who would be on your guest list for the most important birth in history? Well, surely at least the place should be palatial and the guest list should be the elites and the important, the rich and the famous. 
God's answer to the question who should be at that birth was some foreigners and a few peasant farmers. Who would you choose to be witness to the greatest moment in human history? Who did God think should be there to meet the resurrected Jesus first? If, it's, if it was me, right? If I'm God in that moment, I'm thinking the first person Jesus needs to appear to is perhaps the high priest or Pontius Pilate or maybe even the Roman emperor himself. The king of all kings is being revealed to the world and surely the way in which that revelation should come is to those who would see themselves as the most important or those ruling God's way to women. Now, it's really important you understand this is first century Israel. A woman's role in society was entirely confined to the affairs of home and the family. Women were not taught to read or write. They were rarely allowed outside. They were not allowed to testify in court. To think of them as second-class citizens in that context is an outrageous promotion. The child Christ is revealed first to foreigners and peasants. And the resurrected Christ is revealed first to people of zero societal or cultural status. What is God trying to tell us about his kingdom? Why these people in these ways? The resurrected Jesus first appears to those the culture says deserve him the least. Christ came for the socially overlooked and the systematically marginalized. This is such an important truth for us to embrace and understand. Just think about that for a moment. I wonder where you find yourself today. I wonder where on the kind of spectrum of those deserving God would you put yourself? We here in Northern Ireland are, are pretty good at, at seeing ourselves pretty low on that spectrum, and that's actually pretty good news. Because it is to those who think they deserve him the least that he seems to prioritize in how he reveals himself. The beginning of life with Jesus is an awareness of our need for him. This is why Jesus says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. If you happen to be listening to this in this moment and you're a person of wealth, don't panic. It can, you know, if we have a few zeros in the bank and we read that text, we think, oh no, we're doomed. Of course, Jesus is saying nothing about whether you're wealthy or not. What he's getting at is those who think they have no need for God find him impossible to find. It is to those who are desperate, lost, and a little bit broken that God seems to prioritize. Those aware of their own issues, baggage, their own egos, their own doubts, their own mistakes and failings. It is to those that the stone gets rolled away and Jesus says, here I am. On this very first Easter Sunday, these two humble women are desperate for God. And the result is that they are witness to the greatest act in history. If you find yourself on this Easter a little bit lost, a little bit fearful, a little bit broken, Jesus moves towards you full of grace and compassion. I get um, teary almost every time I read that part of Matthew 28 when the Marys see Jesus and the word that he says is, 
greetings. How are you doing? So compassionate, so full of love. These women have been on the ultimate roller coaster. The text records that they were sitting outside the tomb the day before. They were there when he was tortured. They were there when he was crucified. They were there when he was buried. They were there when nothing was happening at the tomb. And now they are there and Jesus is risen. There's no theological exegesis. There's no great declaration. There's no great commission even in this moment. Jesus simply says, greetings. I am here and I am for you. God's power, it moves towards the weak and the humble, those who know that they have need for him. But his power doesn't look the way we expect power to look and function. I wonder, what's the most powerful thing you have ever seen in your life? The most powerful thing you've ever seen in your life. I was thinking about that this week. I thought about my Uncle Wallace's Clydesdale horses whenever I was a child. These giant animals that you were just constantly trying to make sure they didn't step on your toe or they would break your entire foot. I remember very vividly watching Jonah Lamu play in the 1995 Rugby World Cup. I particularly enjoyed watching him play against England in the semi-final. There's a brilliant clip of him absolutely steamrolling my cat, the now backs coach for Ireland. My cat actually backflips as he gets run over. I think the commentator uh, quotes something like, Jonah Lamu is the perfect blend between a Ferrari and a bulldozer. And of course, he completely changed the game of rugby forever. Power is so often thought of in those terms, isn't it? The ability to exert or impose your will upon someone else. We think often about power in the terms of strength. We have power whenever we get to do what we want. Power in our culture is often treated through money or influence. If I get more money, then I will have more power. This is why we're addicted as a culture to the idea of fame. If I was famous than ever, then I would be able to do whatever I want. I think it's pretty clear to see power in God's kingdom doesn't work like that. His power flows through sacrifice, not strength. There is, you see, a, a dark power in this world that haunts all of us. In normal times, particularly in the West, we do a really good job of kind of orchestrating our lives to avoid this power. Over the last year, we have found it almost impossible to do that. And the truth is, it touches us all. The power of death. Maybe I'm just getting old. <laughs> Maybe it's because we've been reading about death for a year, talking about it uh, loads. But I have never in my life been more aware of how quickly life passes and how utterly powerless all of us are to slow it down. The resurrection of Jesus, witnessed by these two Marys, gives us hope. Hope that the darkest and the most feared power in the whole world, the power of death itself, it has been defeated. This is not superstition. It's not pie in the sky when you die. This is a real and living hope that moves towards us if we have the humility to understand and accept our need for it. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, a new power, a different power, it has been unleashed upon the earth. The most powerful act in history came not through a show of strength, but through a demonstration of sacrifice, and it changed the world for us all. It is this power that allows, allows us to join the prophet Hosea when he said, where, O oh, death, is your victory? 
where, O oh, death, is your sting? Death without Jesus is a hopeless, it's a hopeless thing. But in Christ, we get to join with the Apostle Paul, declaring to live as Christ and to die as gain. That's the pinnacle of discipleship. It's such a mad statement. Now listen, I'm in no hurry to die. Let me be honest about that. But there is something that happens to us when we immerse ourselves in the Easter story that no matter how dire or how bad this gets, we understand that this is not the end. The resurrection of Jesus marks the beginning of a new world order, a world where death no longer has the final say, a world where freedom and forgiveness become freely available to all of us. But there's more than that. I think one of the shadows of the historical emphasis certainly in this part of the world, the personal forgiveness because of the cross and resurrection, it, it puts limits on the intended breadth and depth of what has been accomplished by Jesus through Easter. Of course, it is so important, imperative even on us to accept the personal effects of the cross and the resurrection, but we are sold short if we think that that is the totality of the Easter message. The power of the resurrection is that it unleashes a new power upon the earth. Resurrection makes forgiveness and freedom available, the new reality for the world. This is so important that we understand this. The resurrection of Jesus is the inauguration of Christ as King of the kingdom here on earth as well as heaven, not at some future point, in some future place, but here and now. The work of the kingdom that Jesus has been doing from Matthew 4 up until now is about to be entrusted to his followers. That the unholy trinity of Satan, sin, and death has been defeated now, not then, but now, this is the point that I think we struggle with. The message of Easter is not that because of this, one day the world will change. The message of Easter is that because of this, the world has changed. The forgiveness of God, the freedom of life in his kingdom is now available to us and the whole world. And we'll unpack this more fully next week, but the kingdom advances as ordinary men and women accept the work of the cross and the resurrection and take up their place in the work of God's kingdom here and now, demonstrating his power and his forgiveness and his freedom through our lives to all we do life with and around. James, why don't you guys come up as I close? I'm gonna unpack that more fully next week, but what does that look like for us? Do any of you remember one of the original box sets called Band of Brothers? It might shock you to know that Band of Brothers was released in 2001. It's 20 years old. If you've no idea what I'm talking about, do yourself a favor and go and try and find it and watch it. But Band of Brothers, it uh, records a story, it's a true story set in World War II of a company of U.S. paratroopers, and, and it follows them from D-Day through to the end of World War II. And there's a scene towards the end of uh, the show that is incredibly powerful, incredibly moving. The war is pretty much over. The Nazis have been defeated, Hitler is dead, and the company of soldiers come upon a concentration camp, and they have no idea what it is, and they have no idea what's happened, and they start to try and interview some of the prisoners, and of course, 
they get to open the gates and tell them that they're free. It's the most perfect metaphor for life, for us. The war is over. Death has been defeated. But somebody has got to go and tell the prisoners and open the gates. See, the resurrection makes freedom and forgiveness the new reality of the world if we will turn from our idols, if we will reject the imposter kings and recognize the one true king and give him our allegiance above all else. The resurrection of Jesus unleashes something unbreakable in us, hope that death itself cannot touch or taint, power that is not me measured by strength but by sacrifice, freedom that's not defined by our whimsical thoughts and feelings but by the impulses and the values of the good and beautiful kingdom of God. Listen, I know we're all a bit fed up. I know we're all pretty tired of what life has become over the last 12 months. I know we continue to live with a level of uncertainty that many of us have never known before. And I know that some of us come to this Easter with broken dreams and broken hearts and maybe even broken lives. And Jesus comes to us in this moment, not with condemnation for where you've gone wrong over the last year, not with some great declaration of get your life in order and this list of things. He comes simply and stands before us in this moment and says, I'm here, I am alive, and I am doing something new now. My hope, my life, it's available to you. There is hope. There is power. There is freedom that is available to us because he lives. The band are going to lead us in a reflection. I want to invite you to stay seated for a moment or two as Hannah leads us, and then I'm going to lead us in some, some ministry.
It's, it's quite clear from the text that these two Marys leave their first encounter with the resurrected Jesus, terrified, confused even, not really sure what they've just experienced. They know that things will never be the same again, but they have no idea yet what that means. I can't help but wonder, and we wouldn't be us if we didn't do this in this moment for all of us. If you've been following Jesus your whole life, or someone has dragged you along or sent you this link, or you find yourself in your sofa watching this this morning, I think this is a moment for all of us freshly, maybe for the first time ever, maybe for the first time in a while, or maybe just for the first time today, to open our lives again to the resurrected, ruling Jesus. So would you just close your eyes with me here? If you're at home, can I invite you just to close your eyes? Open your hands in front of you. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. My sense is for some of you haven't heard that from the Lord for weeks, months, maybe even a year. Greetings, says the Lord. A reminder that he is with you that he is for you and that he loves you, that this was for you. This whole story, this whole ordeal was so that you would be known by him. And so, Lord Jesus, in this moment, we receive you freshly. We confess on this Easter Sunday, Jesus, we need you. Money won't satisfy. Fame is an illusion. Jesus, we need you. And we welcome you in our lives. Come, Lord Jesus. Make us new. Just as we were praying before uh, this morning's service, I, I was reminded of uh, a story from the beginning of our journey as a church. And uh, it was one Sunday, uh, I got up at the end of a gathering, and I, I had a sense that there was somebody uh, there whose business was right on the brink. And um, I prayed, and about a month later, I got a phone call from a guy um, who was there that Sunday. And he was expecting to have to begin to close his business that week. And uh, the Monday morning when he arrived at his yard where he operated his business from, there, there was literally a uh, traffic jam down the road as people had a queue, were queuing up <laughs> to come and buy what he was selling the first time in a year. Uh, it just popped into my head as we were praying, and my, my sense is maybe you're here in this room, maybe you're watching online, but um, I, I just sense that there's somebody uh, and your business is right on the brink. You think it's done, actually, and maybe you're expecting to have to make some really tough calls tomorrow. And uh, before we finish, I just want to pray specifically for you um, that you would know hope and resurrection power into that situation. And so I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up or anything like that because I know that's a bit sensitive. But um, maybe if that's you, just want to discreetly put your hand on your heart. Just pray with me, please, for a moment. Um, Lord, we know you are a God who uh, routinely makes the impossible possible. And so I just speak possibility and resurrection power and life over all of us who look at tomorrow with fear and hopelessness. Father, I pray for those of us in our community right now who think it's over, who think tomorrow is going to be the worst day of their lives. I just pray resurrection, life, and power into that situation. And Lord, we pray, do it again. I pray for supernatural intervention. I pray for a business that looks like it's going to close to be resurrected 
for tomorrow to be the best trading day in the last year, maybe in the last 10 years. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. We put our trust, our faith in you. Amen. Amen. It is important for us to step into celebration in this moment. Christ is risen. He is for you and he is with you. If that is, uh, feels far away in your emotions, can I really encourage you um, to just step into this moment of celebration and worship? I know for some of us, our hearts are heavy. I know for some of us, we're exhausted. This is a moment for us to inhabit the story that is true not just the story that we're experiencing or the story that we're feeling. So will you join me? Will you stand? If you're at home, can I encourage you? This is just really hard and super awkward, and I'm going to have no idea if you're going to do it. But if you're at home, will you please stand? Will you join us as we finish in worship and in celebration our, uh, what's it called? Online community choir? Is that what we're calling it? Whatever that is. Whatever the little boxes of voices are, they're going to uh, join us as we finish uh, in this song, let's worship Jesus together. Did you hear anything there? <laughs> no? No, 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 I know.
I thought I was going to need to do the do both well kick thing there. Um, we should find a video for that and show you all sometime. Um, happy Easter, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us here in the venue and at home and online. Please don't forget, 7 p.m. this Wednesday. And if you can't get into the building next Sunday, please do um, fill in the reserve uh, list. Lagan Valley Vineyard, may you be filled with the freedom, the forgiveness, and the power of the resurrected Jesus this day and forevermore in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody.